Ten seconds remaining. Five All seconds All right, remaining. welcome everyone. As uh, we're set to start the Dota 2 Canada Cup Season 6 Reserve playoffs. Time. As it took us a while, but we finally finished the group stage. We finished it off last night with uh, the the Group C tiebreakers oh. to uh, determine which team would move on. And unfortunately, Radiant we weren't able to cast the third back. game of that series. As uh, there were some issues with um, the ticket for in, inside of Dota TV. So um, because we're casting through the ticket, it makes it a little bit difficult when... Um, when their ticket, when the game isn't ticketed, we, we no longer have a game to cast, so unfortunately we had to sit out from that one. But um, complexity, we already knew advanced set of Group C, but we, we didn't know whether Archon was going to be able to beat Power of Friendship fast enough to be able to advance into the next round, or if Power of Friendship Ten was going to be able to take remaining. the win um, regardless of time and advance to the next round. Well, Radiant team pick. spoiler, we... Uh, we saw Archon actually take that win, and they did so fast enough to advance, so we had Enchantress. Complexi and Archon advancing out of that group. Dire team which means picked. that we're set to start the playoffs, so we're going to be starting off with Infamous, which is the ex-unknown guys. They're going to be on uh, the ra uh, the Dire side here. Um, excuse me. <laughs> we got Infamous. They're, they're going to be uh, the ex-unknown guys, and we, they're playing up against Not Today which uh, we got to see a decent amount of in the in the main qualifiers for the Shanghai Major. Ten seconds they didn't remaining. do so hot, though. Um, they struggled quite a bit. Five they only won one game, and that remaining. was against Team Freedom. Um, so they finished, ended up finishing last in Group B. Reserve time. But as for these ex-unknown guys, they actually they did a decent job. Although they didn't make it to the major qualifiers, they got very, very close. They got all the way to the finals in, I believe it was the second open qualifier where they uh, ended up losing 2-1 to one against Elite Wolves. So uh, they're still sticking around. They're still showing that they've, uh, they're ready to play. But uh, they're going to be on the Radiant side this time around. And uh, we, we got to see the little bit that we did see of, the Elite, of uh, Not Today in, uh, in the Majors. We got to see Jerry with some incredible plays on the Oracle. So not surprising to see that band out immediately. But uh, let's let's hop in and talk a little bit more about these bands and these picks. So we've got Oracle and Viper getting banned out by our Radiant side. Death Prophet and Darkseer getting banned out by the Dire. As for our opening picks, it's going to be a Gyrocopter and a Naga Siren for Not Today. And it's going to be Undying and Shadow Shaman, the Radiant picks for back. Unknown. As for our next set of bands, we had Shadow, Shadow Fiend and Sven getting banned out by Dire. And Batrider and Lena getting banned out by our Radiant side. And on to our next set of picks. We had Disruptor and Ursa, once again Ten picked up by Not remaining. Today. And Queen of Pain and Enchantress were the pickups Five for Unknown. Remaining. And I'm going to probably bounce around calling them Unknown and Infamous. Is, it's, it's a little unfortunate that these ex-Unknown guys are uh, constantly changing their names and they haven't really had a... A name that they've been able to stick to Dyer recently, so back. everyone just kind of calls them the X unknown guys. So <laughs> they are officially going by the name as infamous, so we'll try to call them that. But uh, if I stumble up and, and call them X unknown, that's uh, that's why. Oh. But we've got our final two bands in here, and that's going to be Radiant the Juggernaut Team and Pink. the Tusk, which means that we are ready for our final picks as. As I have to agree with Chad, I'm surprised Enchantress was such a late pick. She's very popular these days. She's been really Dying rising in popularity in the Americas, and more primarily in in the North America. Of course, these are these are both two South American teams, but um, that was really popularized by Ix Mike. He kind of brought the whole idea of running the Enchantress um, to the forefront, and then you know a bunch of different teams started playing with it and practicing it and and experimenting with it, and it seemed to work for them. So it became uh, this very high priority pick in that I seen. So uh, a little bit surprised to see it go this far down the order Five seconds in, uh, remaining. in this game, but reserve time. But uh, the final pick is in, and that's going to be a razor for unknown. And there, I'm doing it again. Infamous, infamous. I'm going to try to call them infamous. It doesn't help that uh, the team names are bugged this game. So, 
So I've got to kind of do a mental remember of, uh, of saying, okay, yeah, instead of ta ta I'm talking about the Radiant side, which team am I going to talk about? Ten and then immediately remaining. unknown or X unknown comes to mind. So I'm going to try to try Five to get rid of that. Remaining. Still Zeus. waiting on the final pick here, and it's going to be a Zeus. But not today. Going to round out the roster with that Zeus, and we didn't really get to talk too much about the lanes and uh, the roles and what we expect to come out, but uh, we can read into it a little bit more now as we've got the Queen of Pain in the mid lane, Enchantress off lane, Razor safe lane, and then the support duo of Undying and Shadow Shaman. That's going to be it for uh, Infamous. I had to correct myself there. <laughs> and uh, as for not today, it looks like we're going to have... Hmm. This one's a little bit different because we could potentially have an aggressive uh, tri lane with an Naga Siren um, Gyrocopter Disruptor. You could do that. Or sorry, the Naga Siren Disruptor and Ursa and then leave the Gyrocopter safe lane and put the Zeus Ten mid. Seconds remaining. That's a possibility. The Naga could even be mid in that scenario. And Five then you take the Zeus remaining. off lane in that tri lane. But I think we are going to see an aggressive tri lane with the Ursa. I think that'll work out for them, but we'll, uh, we'll have to see how they choose to run it. And just to, just to counter Prepare a little bit of what's being said in chat. Um, definitely Earth Spirit is undervalued in the NAC and that's, uh, that's for sure. But uh, as for Beastmaster, I have to completely disagree with you on that. We've got uh, Bulba and uh, Swindle Melons both play incredible Beastmasters. And when their teams are involved, it's a very high priority pick. But we're going to have an interesting move here by Infamous. Is they're just going to run straight down the mid lane, smoke up. And they're actually not going to find anyone, but they might be able to get some good wards down. Which will uh, give us enough time to actually introduce who's on what. As our Radiant side is going to be Team Infamous. Infamous. we got Promises playing the Enchantress. Greedy is going to be playing the Queen of Pain. Kataro is going to be playing the Razor. Kronos is going to be on the Undying. And Galaxies is going to be on to the Shadow Shaman. As for our Dire side, it's going to be Team Not Today. We've got plus 25 playing the Ursa. Jerry, we saw him, like I said... Incredible plays on the Oracle. Did get banned out this game, so we're not going to see it. But he's going to be on the Disruptor, so maybe he'll still be able to make some big plays. we got ABCD playing the Gyrocopter. DDX is going to be on the Zeus, and Goody's going to be on the Naga Siren. As for our starting items, nothing begins. too surprising. we got DDX picking up Boots oh, first, and also Galaxies conductor. has Boots first as well. We do also have Jerry holding on to a set of sentries. Oh, well, one sentry. He's already placed one of them in the lane. Just making sure that there's not a lane ward, because I think it's pretty obvious that uh, Infamous are going to predict an aggressive tri lane given um, the draft coming out from Not Today. And we can see them already adapting to that by throwing their enchanters in the bottom lane. But we've already got action in the mid as Jerry has been shackled up, and he's going to be our first blood. As infamous, they were setting it up, they were hiding the, the trees up here, electric. and they were able to come out at the right time and catch Jerry out there. But you can already see uh, infamous predicting the lanes and putting their enchantress in the safe lane, uh, instead of putting her in the more traditional off lane, and then uh, they ended up putting the razor in the mid lane and queen of pain off lane, and that does a lot for them. It allows them to, if if they have to move around a lot on the map, they can still leave their Queen of Pain up in the top lane. They can leave their Enchantress in the bottom lane. These heroes are, are perfectly fine and able to play safe in their roles without the supports being there. So it allows the supports to move around the map a lot more freely. Razor is a, you know, maybe you could have put him in the safe lane and maybe left him there, but you really want him to have a good amount of um, CS and a good start to the game. So it's a good idea to put him in the mid lane where uh, he'll actually be going up against the Gyrocopter, as uh, not today even going with a little bit more unpredictableness in, in their lanes. And in the bottom lane, it's going to be the Naga Siren and the Zeus. So once again, not really predictable. And the Naga's doing a lot of the zoning. We had a brief pause there as we're going to resume, as Galaxy's going to charge out of the... Uh, jungle, but not going to be in range to get the shackle off on a goodie there. They wouldn't really have much damage to bring him down anyways. Entregis is kind of one of those heroes that really struggles with damage early on. 
And she doesn't really have anything in her kit fortified. that really boosts her damage until she gets level 6, until she gets impetus online. But so prior to that, it's all just about kind of slows and, and tank ability. But uh, our top lane is going to be the Ursa and the Disruptor. They're going to be going up against the Queen of Pain, which I already mentioned. It looks like the Undying is going to be up here as well. Mid lane, we already talked about the Razor versus the Gyro. As we're going to see, the Gyro actually make a rotation down towards bottom lane, but or bottom rune, but Galaxies is already there, so he's going to pick up that Illusion rune. We already saw Kataro going up towards the top to pick up the Bounty. But Kronos just dies to uh, the neutral creeps there, and that was just a fast trip to the to the fountain. We saw we saw how low HP he was already, so uh, not really too surprising that uh, that he did that. He's not really losing any gold, and uh, this way he's able to come back in the lane fairly quickly, but to also do so with still having some of his regen. He would have had to use all these tangos to get back up to to not even full HP. So just being a little bit more efficient there. This galaxy is being uh, a little bit of a pain there with those illusions, just forcing out ABCD. As, uh, we're going to see Goody make a rotation towards the mid lane. Maybe try and help him out. I don't think they were entirely sure where, where Galaxies was, whether that was him going towards the mid lane or whether he was in the bottom. Not sure if he showed with this observer ward where he was. Either way, uh, they don't really have a way of telling which one's the illusion and which one's the real one without him having a bottle or anything like that. or or really being able to see uh, HP ticks if he if he didn't show for very long. So far it looks like uh, Infamous is getting the better of the lanes here as they've got the top three in favor of CS mid. We've got the Razor sitting at 20 and 8 versus the Gyrocopter sitting at 8 and 2. As they're going to actually try to change that up as they're going to engage on a Kataro here as Goody's going to get the ensnare off but with that drain, it means the gyrocopter is pretty much going to do no damage, which means they've got no way of finishing. The majority of their damage is going to be in the rocket barrage, but that's still level 1. Because ABCD has gone for the, the max homing missile build, but he's also likes to put one point into flak cannon, which is something that we don't typically see early on in the game from these mid gyrocopters. But ABCD has chosen to go for it. Maybe it's because he wants to be able to, to push the lane, control the lane um, against the Razor. The other option there is just the fact that you're going up against an Undying on the other side, so you want to be able to, if the Undying comes in and drops the Tombstone, you want to be able to attack that Tombstone and get the damage in that's needed to destroy it while still doing damage to the other heroes around. But that's that's more of a, a team fight thing, and we're not really going to see that in the early stages of the game, so I think it's primarily just to be able to control the lane, push the lane against Razor. Razor isn't really one of those heroes that can clear waves very, very quickly. Yeah, he's got his Plasma Field, which co helps do some of that AoE damage. But for the most part, you can push a lane on him, and he could be under his tower. And that allows you the freedom to go and, and go pick up runes and stuff like that. We haven't really seen an example of that, where ABCDs had been able to get control over runes. But uh, that's, I guess, the theory behind it. Promise is in a little bit of trouble here. He'll get ensnared up. As a lot of this magic damage coming up from DDX is not really prevented by... That untouchable that Promises has is that just really slows your right click attack speed. Is DDX getting quite low, but he'll be okay. But Promises does have those uh, those healing wisps, the nature's attendants, to heal her up, which means that uh, they've got to completely burst her down if they want to uh, get a kill on this Enchantress, and that's just not going to be able to happen. Maybe once Zeus hits level 6, if they're able to uh, get a Lightning Bolt off and then... Uh, Thunder God's Wrath and Lightning Bolt again. They might be able to bring down the Enchantress, but even still it's going to be close. It's greedy. Taking some damage from this Ursa. Uh, it's plus 25 is elected to go for. Two points in Empower. Or Overpower. Was, uh, actually, I missed that. As Galaxies actually went down. I'm not even sure exactly where that was. Oh, he dove past the mid-tier 1. As Kronos going to drop the Tombstone here, and he's going to go after DD DDX. As we had a kill in the top lane, as Jerry's managed to get a kill on the Greedy, but Kronos gonna maybe think about diving past the tier 1 tower here, and now he's gonna get caught out as Goody comes in, gets the ensnare off. As Infamous maybe playing a little bit too aggressive there and getting punished, as Not Today just says, you know what, play into us, we'll uh, we'll go for the perfect counter. 
and shut you guys down immediately. But still, Infamous, they're they're dominating lanes early on. I, you know, I briefly talked about it with the Razor sitting at 48 and 19 now compared to the Gyros 14 and 2. That's a very big discrepancy and a huge win for the Radiant side. But then even look at the offline. You've got Greedy sitting at 42 and 10. Yeah, he just went down, but he's at 42 and 10 CS. Compare that to the 23 and 0 of the Ursa. That is a huge win again for uh, Infamous in this off lane. And look at this. Greedy's even getting a kill as he's going to bring down Jerry there with the Sonic Wave. Then the bottom lane, we even have Promises sitting at 41, now 42 and 10. And the closest to him is DDX at 24 and 4. As this offlane Zeus is actually the leader in CS for his team. As both, uh, is under attack. As not today, is just kind of getting slapped around by Infamous. And to, to answer Tom in chat, yeah, both these teams are Peruvian, I, I believe. I believe not today's Peruvian. But um, the Infamous guys on the Radiant side are uh, the X Unknown guys. Fortunately, we're going to have another pause here, so hopefully it won't be too long. I'm going to mute my mic just briefly. I'll be right back with you in one second. All right, we're back. But unfortunately, we still paused here, so we'll still have to wait. Not today, more like not like this. <laughs> That's funny. But we're resumed, or so we're good to go here. As we still look and, and kind of wait to see what not today is going to be able to do. Because this laning phase has been pretty much a complete disaster for them. They're going to be coming out of it way behind, and Colonel's going to drop the tombstone and die past the tier 1 tower. But once again, he's going to get caught out here as he's just 10 out of 10 throw this game. As he's going to go down again, Glimp's going to bring him back just to secure it. As they actually did need those extra uh, right clicks to finish off the Undying. But he's just really trying to force things and they don't have to. They are winning all over the map. And now ABCD is going to rotate in behind Greedy. As Greedy waited patiently and then got, make sure he got his blink off at the right time. They are going to do a call down, but it's going to be a little bit short as Greedy was able to get out of that before the homing missile hit him. But Kataro is going to TP on in and so is Kratos. As his TP is going to take a little bit longer because the Razor had just TP'd, but they are going to find the kill on the Goody and now they're going to try to chase down plus 25 who will look to turn around. But he's just kind of getting kited. He actually is getting a decent amount of attacks off. And he will go down Jerry, which uh, they spotted. They actually switched uh, the damage from the Razor onto Jerry, but Jerry was still able to TP out on time. But again, another advantage goes the way of Infamous. As Not Today still struggles to get uh, any kind of CS. Uh -huh. I, uh, I didn't actually mention it in uh, in the draft, but this is uh, the series is going to be a best of three. So this is only game one. So even if it uh, is a complete disaster and continues to be a complete disaster for Not Today, they will have uh, they will have the opportunity to bounce back in game two and and then hopefully bring this to a game three. Um, even if they do lose the series, they are not out of it, though. This is a uh, double elimination playoffs. So you will drop down to the loser's bracket, or the lower bracket. And uh, the downside of that is, well, next time you lose, you're out. But they could go for a gank here, and DDX just gets killed. And I don't even think they're going to get the kill on this Enchantress. As Promises is just kind of juking around, maybe he's going a little bit too aggressive here, as ABCD is going to be here as well. Kinetic Field... Gonna tear up the enchant, but he gets another kill as he drops Jerry. Now he's gonna try to outrun this homing missile and he's gonna be kind of doing it, but uh, eventually it will catch up to him. But I think this is overcommitted. Some some more heroes from not today as Goody looks to get focused down here. But Galaxies as he's standing there, channeling that sha uh, shackle, he will go down, but he will be able to get the trade there. And then Greedy is able to get the kill on the ABCD, who looks like he had a long TP from uh, someone else already TPing back. Now Greedy will be able to get back, but uh, going back to what I was talking about, about the double elimination, when you drop down to the loser's bracket, you uh, you are then forced to play best of ones for the remainder, so you can just be Dyer's one and out there, and uh, 
That's why you really want to stay in the winner's bracket, but also, of course, you get two chances when you're still in the winner's bracket, so... Both these teams will Dyer look to stay up there and get a little bit further into, uh, into the playoffs. Structures are fortified. We are down to eight teams. So it's just, uh... Dyer's middle tower has fallen. So it's just that, but we're going to lose the mid-tier one here, as... Infamous is going to get that, and, and yeah, 84 CS at 10.30. It's uh, pretty decent for uh, Razor, and it's just Infamous completely smashed their lanes. It, it wasn't even close. They were just pretty much free farming in all their lanes, and this Razor is just kind of r getting out of control. As we, only expect, uh, we only expect him to continue with the CS going forward as... I expect Infamous to start breaking down some of these towers and just take over control Radiant's of the map and, and really attack. force Not Today to basically just defend their high ground and try to eke out as much as they can on the map, but it's uh, it's probably going to get closer and closer towards them just actually having to GG out. Even though it, our kill total is only 8-6, to six, this is going to quickly get out of hand unless uh, Infamous starts uh, throwing real hard. But I will switch it over to the net worth, and, and we can see the top three are, are quite a bit ahead. As Galaxies looks like he's going to throw here, as uh, he's going to die. So it's a little bit of a feed there. He was trying to make a rotation towards the bottom rune to, to pick that up, the 12-minute rune. But there were already heroes there waiting for him, and they and they caught him out. They had vision of him coming with this Observer Ward. But it looks like Kataro is going to try to set something up with Greedy. As they're going to engage here on ABCD. They didn't actually see Goody, but they're going to go anyway. It's just Goody's going to get the sleep off. That'll allow ABCD to TP out. Now it could be Greedy and Kataro that are in trouble. The Static Storm is going to come down as the Queen of Pain is stuck, not able to blink, and she'll go down. Goody's going to go down at the same time. But now they're going to try to chase down Kataro. Glimpse going to bring him back. As this Razor, which had ridiculous CS, is super, super tanky. And he just stands and fights, and he's going to get both. It's actually going to be a triple kill for him. He got the kill on the Naga Siren before as well, and look at this. The amount of damage coming in from ABCD there, as uh, Promises almost got the kill there, but once again, Chrono's just kind of overextending himself. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, it's getting noted in chat. Dire Wave Clear is a gyro ult, so it's going to make it very difficult for them to uh, be able to defend. They also have some Wave Clear in Riptide from the Naga Siren, but attack. that's still very weak. Um... But yeah, I mentioned a little bit earlier about um, the Gyrocopter getting an early point into Flak Cannon in the laning phase. Um, at level 4 Dyer's he had a point in Flak Cannon, which I thought was, was rather unusual, but it does help Dyer's kind of control the lanes a little bit. But uh, when it comes to actual wave clear against a push coming, it really is just the call down. Because um, Flak Cannon early on in the game, Gyro isn't doing enough damage um, to really clear a wave with a with a flat cannon, it certainly helps, Dyer's but uh, he can't reliably do it every attack. lane, every wave, because it is a 30 second cooldown, but you don't really have the opportunity to use it every 30 seconds. It looks like the tier 1 tower is going to go down here. Jerry Dyer's misses the deny there, but plus 25 is there to get it. And now we got Kataro, who has picked up an invis rune, as they're going to look to engage here onto the Ursa. And they're going to do just that, Jerry. Does have a glimpse available, so it's just going to send Kataro back a little bit. The kinetic field is going to allow plus 25 to get out of there. As Kronos once again going to engage, he drops the tombstone, doesn't even get a single uh, zombie to spawn, and it is going to spawn on the creep wave though. As while we were watching the action in the top lane, there was a kill in the bottom lane, as Radiant's not today, scored a kill on promises. So the enchantress is dead. Now, not today we'll look to get their first tower of the game as they start doing some damage to this tier 1 in the bottom lane, but it is Radiant structures got are fortified. a lot of HP. As Greedy going for the bottom room once again, he gets caught out, and now it's actually even in terms of kill. 11 to 11, as not today has managed to catch up, and I, I really don't understand how it can even be Radiant's even in kills. Is this one is pretty lopsided in terms of how the laning phase went. We do see actually both supports from Infamous very low in terms of net worth. As, uh, the bottom tower was destroyed, the top tier 2 gets destroyed as well, but the more important part is the fact that Not Today is in Roche Pit and doing that. So this is actually going to give them a good amount of gold. 
but also the Aegis before their Ursa. If they're able to do it in time, as the Tyro's going to come in, and plus 25 is able to get the kill on Roche and able to pick up the Aegis. As uh, they used to sleep, but they used it just a little bit too late there. But uh, it didn't matter in the end. It does allow them to, to get away safely, so... They'll take the Aegis, and in they'll go. But Infamous is going to continue to pressure here, as they're going to pressure this tier 2 in the mid. As ABCD is going to drop that call down from the side. But uh, they're not able to engage there, and that's not good for them. They don't have sleep, they don't have call down. They're going to use the Thunder God's Wrath, which is actually going to get them a kill onto the Undying. We're also going to use the Shadow Shaman off to the left. As Kataru with the Plasma Field will get the kill onto DDX as well. Pretty much all three kills that are happening uh, uh, very close together. But uh, the Tier 2 Tower will go down. Now Infamous will, will back away and probably regroup and look for a push on the bottom tier 1. As Glimpse is actually going to send Kataru back into the middle of everyone here on Not Today. And that's going to be another kill for Not Today. As they're now ahead 14 to 12. As this is continuing to allow this gyrocopter to get back in the game. As he's now sitting at 7, 1, and 2 after getting completely smashed in lane. The Razor was actually 5 times his CS in lane, in a 1v1 lane, and, and somehow he's sitting at 7, 1, and 2, so not today. This is going to be the comeback of a century if they're able to pull this one back, and let's take a look at our gold graph. It is still a 5k lead for Infamous, but with how the laning phase went, that should be a lot bigger than that. As for the XP, we're actually very close to zero, and that's partly because these supports are, uh, are very far down the list. I'll actually bring up our hero level here, and you can see Level 8 on the Undying isn't the lowest, it's just the level 6 on the roster. I don't think we've seen a single Serpent Wards get dropped yet. But yeah, the, the roster's really struggled to get some XP. And that's kind of bringing down that XP. Things fly. We'll switch back to, uh, to Net Worth and keep tabs on that as some items are starting to come out now. As the Naga Siren is going to pick up the mech, so that's going to give them a lot more team fight as well. We also had the Blink Dagger picked up by Ursa on the back of the last team fight. ABCD has his Sange, has his Drums, has his Treads. Now he's even going to pick up a double damage rune. We expect him to probably finish that S and Y as his next item. We have the Aether Lens on DDX, who's trying to escape these easy. This easy camp and that uh, just looked a little bit silly there, but uh, <laughs> he will. Uh, I think he had his eyes on the bottom lane because he actually uh, he threw out a, a chain lightning there to get a last hit. But he's gonna look to complete uh, a veil. It looks like. As for Jerry, he's gone tranquils and urn. And that should be everyone on our dire side here as well. We'll look at the more wealthy Radiant side, but we've gotta be we gotta be careful because it looks like a team fight's about to start here as ABCD will actually fly in the completion of his S and Y. We already have Kataru finish an S and Y and he's also picked up a BKB. Nice fresh 10 second BKB, so full 10 seconds. This is Sarah's gonna fly in, it's gonna trap Kataru, who then will just pop that BKB. And that is as soon as uh, the call down comes out, sleep will come out from Goody, but it's not going to stop Kataru. He's BKB'd and he's just mowing everyone down. He's doing it by himself and he's got two kills. He's going to look to get more as DDX will go down because his teammates have started to come and show up to the flight after they, they woke up for their, from their slumbers. Plus 25, desperately trying to get one more attack off onto that Razor, but he will not find it. So he's going to go down and he'll respawn with the, with the Aegis and be able to blink away, but they are probably going to be able to chase him down. So he's already down to half HP. Jerry with a kinetic field will kind of delay them, and he's also going to glimpse back the Queen of Pain. But they will find that kill on the Ursa Bear. And now they're probably not going to dive the tier 3 here to go for Jerry, but Promises has, uh, has better ideas as uh, he'll get that 4 shot from the Impetus. So he's going to get ensnared just barely outside of the tier 3 range. That'll allow him to uh, to stay alive and get back to uh, his teammates. As we see, he's gone for Hannah Midas, Drums, Phase Boots, but also picked up that Dragon Lance. as we see that it being a very popular pick on the Enchantresses. Kronos, he's been struggling uh, quite a bit, 
uh, in this early game, but he's just got his arcane boots and also added on a cloak. Galaxies, also arcanes and a cloak. We already saw Katara with that BKB and SNY. We have to uh, check in on Greedy. He's got his Orchid and uh, an Ogre Club, which we expect to probably be uh, building towards a BKB. Dyer's he's going to try to go for uh, for a goodie there. He's going to get some damage in, but he has to respect the fact that ABCD has rotated in. And there's going to be a homing missile chasing down that Queen of Pain. While Greedy was making that rotation, he did notice that there was a pretty large stack here. And he forced ABCD away from it. So you might see Infamous come in and contest that stack. Or, uh, or they might just play it safe and kind of back away and just accept the fact that ABCD is going to get that as uh, we expect not today to really protect their gyrocopter while he's clearing the stack. Is, uh, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. So ABCD will get the full amount from that stack, or at least once his, his next flak cannon comes up, he'll be able to clear off these uh, these bigger creeps. But we had a, a few fights since we last checked in, and it's been continuous in, continuously in favor of Infamous, as they've now... Um, climbed up over that 10,000 gold lead and XP's also climbing up as well as it's surpassed 7,500 Infamous looks to invade the not today jungle here but they're, they're only going to see some heroes but not actually be able to catch so once again they're rotating down with ABCD as I think he's going to go for this ancient stack again he's already popped the flak so he'll get a, a little bit more gold on his side as he's going to get two of them but without Helm of the Dominator, he's not able to just sit there and tank them. So Kataro and Kronos will uh, not look to contest that, as I think they believe that it's probably already been completely farmed up. But anyway, they're going to go down and, and start pushing the bottom lane, as they're after the last standing Tier 2 tower. So once that one's down, then they're going to have to do the more difficult uh, part of actually breaking the high ground and taking down one of those tier threes. They'd be much better suited to try and find a fight outside of the base and and basically wipe not today and then Radiant's and then go up onto the high ground and and start taking down those tier three towers and claim a set of racks. Dyer's bottom tower it looks like is we under uh, we are going to have Radiant's this tier two tower, tower push actually come attack. out and it looks like it's just going to be completely given up. As uh, plus 25 is going to be pushing in the top lane. We do have TP coming in from Greedy, and he's just going to immediately blow up that Ursa. As the bottom tier 2 will get claimed. And now with the Ursa dead for 35 seconds, they may be able to push uphill on the uh, to go for the tier 3 here. I don't think they're going to be able to force out a buyback. As, uh, they're going to use the sleep here. As Goody was actually trapped in some Serpent Wards, and, and this is actually a great timing for them to sleep. They're able to focus down the Serpent Wards, but also focus down the Tombstone. Buyback will actually come out from the Ursa, as he's going to TP in. We're going to lose Kronos to start things off, as Kataro has popped that BKB. He was the focus target for the Ursa, but he just backs away, and now ABCD with the double kill is going to make to look to make it a triple. But no, he's actually going to go down as Greedy comes blinking on in. BKB popped. As they start mowing down some heroes, as they're going to get DDX as well. Because that was looking like it was it was kind of working out for not or for not today there. But then all of a sudden, Greedy shows up, and apparently he's he's even finding these supports just outside their fountain. As he uh, he didn't back with Kataru there, instead he reengaged and found two more kills, and now he's even going to pick up a blink dagger on the Queen of Pain. As uh, they're Dyer's actually going to have to back away with their razors, Kataru. Dyer's structures are fortified. Will, will also blink towards Thank the mid lane. So As we got a glimmer cape out for Kronos. We've also got that blink dagger I just mentioned on the razors. BKB's Dyer's down to eight seconds. He's also picked up a hyperstone, so probably for an AC there. As uh, Greedy's going to blink away rather quickly with those double blinks. As uh, his BKB, we saw the first pop, so it's only down to 9 seconds. There's really a lot that needs to come out here for not today for them to really look uh, a lot stronger in these fights. Although they did have a good moment there where they ended up wiping out a bunch of heroes. They had a really good 
uh, called out and a lot of damage coming up from the gyrocopter. Those flak seem to do some good work. They also were able to uh, time their sleep properly. The tombstone had come down, the master but weren't had come down. Then they were able to sleep, so they were able to attack those and get those down. And an undying without a tombstone and a roster without the mass serpent wards makes them very very weak heroes so you know you still have some good control with the shadow shaman but that's control where you're not really doing much damage the whole point of your mass serpent wards are to deal damage in the team fights or deal structure damage while everyone's distracted by a team fight and distracted by your your cc so that's what roster really provides the fight but without those mass serpent wards you're just kind of standing there kind of cc'ing and same with Kronos, it's the same It's the same situation for an Undying. With the Tombstone down, it's meant to distract. It also does a lot of damage, but it's meant to distract. And if you can keep it alive, then... Um, or the enemy is focusing it, then that's buying time for you and the rest of your teammates to do a lot more in the team fight. But with both those gone, thanks to the, the sleep, it uh, basically makes it very, very difficult. Look at this, Jerry's actually... Or, sorry, good, Greedy's going to get a four-man... Sonic wave, but then he's just gonna get Sonic uh, caught in the static storm. And he's just gonna go down. That was a very, very greedy and risky play, and he got punished for it. As good, he's gonna sleep here to try and help them disengage. But Katara's gonna get a double kill with that plasma field. It's gonna be a triple. Never mind. Kronos is gonna steal it with a smack from the zombies. ABCD is able to get a kill here onto the Shadow Shaman, but immediately promises with the return kill. They'll clean up Roche as well. Is this going to be an Aegis for, I'm guessing, the Ranger? And yes, they will pick that up for Katara. Yeah, they don't really need to be messing around with, uh, with the Ancients. I think they can push and get some damage in on the Tier 3. They may not be able to bring it down, and they may not be able to bring down a set of racks, but uh, I think some, some damage here would be good for them, but uh, he does have to be a little bit wary of that respawn from the Disruptor, and yeah, he's only going to get a couple swings at it. Nature attend us. Promises has actually just flown in his Aghanim Scepter, so they're going to have that available to them. We actually haven't checked in on Galaxy's items. He has picked up an Aether Lens, so he's got that extra range to be able to provide that CC. Greedy, maybe he's kind of screwed his head back on right. As uh, he's respawned and looking to join up with his team. As that last play was very, very 3-2-2-esque. Uh, three, two, two they are still very much in the lead. As DDX has picked up a 4 staff. We've also got an Ogre Club picked up by plus 25. As BKB is going to be on the way, but it's going to take some time before he gets there. ABCD has picked up a Demon Edge. I don't think it's MKB. It's got to be Rapier. It's got to be Rapier. As they are definitely well up against the wall here. As they need something to bounce back. As Jerry's going to go down there once again. Greedy getting the kill there. Nofamis going to look to uh, to jump up here onto the high ground. Greedy losing a lot of HP. In fact, he's going to get bursted down by the Thunder God's Wrath. As Kataru is now off on the high ground. And he's going to get focused down by plus 25. Sleep's going to come out from Goody. Making sure that his... Uh, his teammates aren't able to save him, but Katara will go down, but he will respawn with that Aegis. Now he's going to blink forward. He's going to get a kill on a goodie, as he's mad that he made everyone sleep and he made him lose his Aegis. It will actually be an MKV purchase by the Gyrocopter, as Urs is going to go down here, and that Gyro is going to go down, and of course no buyback, since he just bought that MKB. Yeah, it wasn't on cooldown still, so... He'll go down, and so will the set of racks. As the range racks has fallen, the melee is soon to fall. Is Jerry looking to engage here? Fortunately, he just has Goody and G uh, DDX with him. There's not a ton of damage, with the Thunder God's Wrath still on cooldown. Now the tier, the, the mid tier three taking a lot of damage as well as Jerry. That long range on impetus from Promises, doing a lot of damage, bringing down that disruptor. The Promises gets glimmer caped up by Chrono, so he's able to get out of there safely. DDX will try to TP away, and he will be able to do so. But that's that's one less death Dyer's death for him, but there's fallen. no way that they're going to be able to stop this Dyer's continuous push from Infamous. Is we're going to lose this mid-set of racks as well, and that's going to leave Not Today down two lane of racks. 
and I really don't see how they're going to be able to bounce back from this. It was a complete disaster. Oh, Thunder God's Wrath gets one, almost gets two. It'll actually score him a third kill because he's able to, uh, to to bolt down promises there. But infamous, I don't know why they didn't back after getting those racks, but they're getting punished for it as XD comes out in chat. As this has been very throwy from. Uh, infamous and if they didn't have a gigantic lead like this I think this game would uh, very quickly go the other way but with uh, with how the laning phase went it's it's almost too uh, too much of a lead to throw and so we'll take a quick look at that lead and it's it's approaching 25,000 gold in favor of infamous XP is over 20k as well You know what, I'm, I'm looking around, I'm looking for something, something big that could turn these fights. And I'm just not seeing it. There's nothing coming out. They need the BKB on the Urso, but he's a long way from that. He's he's somewhat close to completing, to picking up the Mithril Hammer, but then he's still going to need a recipe on top of that. They're going to lose their courier, they're going to lose their gyrocopter. And now this is just going to be a push for the final set of racks. They're just going to march down the top lane. As without the gyrocopter, this is going to be a very, very difficult hold. The Master of Rewards will go down as Kataro and Greedy both going to blink on in. Now they'll both just pop their BKB and that Static Storm is going to mean nothing to them. As good game, well played, will get called by ABCD. You see immediately disconnects from the game. But uh, this is just game one in this best of three. So Infamous will take that game one and we'll look to see if not today is able to bounce back in game two and bring this to a third game. But so far, it's uh, it's looking pretty good for Infamous and the X Unknown guys, as they actually got they they didn't even really qualify for the playoffs, but uh, they got lucky or lucked in to uh, to joining the playoffs after Pain Gaming uh, disbanded. That's how Infamous earned the spot in here, and now they're they're making they're making use of it as uh, they're going to take game one of this series, as we we even saw them doing their somewhat trolly end to a game we got a razor picking up a rapier but but uh, so far so good for infamous as they pretty much walk all over not today in game one of the series there was some very sloppy play from them but it didn't matter in the end they still managed to take the victory but we'll look to see if maybe game two will be a little bit closer and, and maybe not today is able to bring this back and go to a game three but in the meantime we are going to throw it to a quick break and we're going to throw it to music and we'll be back uh, shortly with game two of this series between Infamous and Not Today, Dota 2 Canada Cup Playoffs.